Okay, we're going to do the final of these three methods, uh, which is newton raphson um, newton, newton raphson is, is, I would say, the kind of the, the most powerful of the methods here. Um, it uses differentiation. Um, it's the most powerful because it's really quite resilient and it seems to always find roots, whereas the other ones have significant problems where you, when you're trying to find a root, you find a different root or it doesn't work or, or it diverges. Um, there is one case where newton raphson doesn't work, but it's rare. Um, so this is newton raphson The idea uh, is most best illustrated with a picture that looks something like this. So say that I have an equation. Actually, I'm using an equation which we could easily solve here. Um, so you can kind of see, uh, see here that we could. Uh, it's going to be 1 over root 2 is, is going to be this value, 0.7-ish, um, which you come across in trigonometry quite often. Um, and we want to try and find where that value is. Let's start over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that we can find the tangent of a graph by differentiating. And we're going to use the tangent to try and get to this value here. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the tangent at the point of our starting value. So x0 is here. This is going to be the coordinate x0, f of x0, because it's put it into the function. We can put it in there. We can find the gradient at that point. We can construct the equation of the tangent at that point. And then we can find where the tangent crosses the x-axis. And that's going to be x1. So we're going to start, go up to the curve, construct the tangent, draw the tangent, intersect the x-axis, that's x1. And we're just going to continue from there. And then you can kind of look at the picture and see that what's going to happen is it's going to zigzag to the root. So it's going to look something like this. And actually, this is a really, really quick method. The, it iterate, it, it converges to roots much, much faster most of the time than the fixed point iteration, which we saw one where we had a cobweb. It took absolutely ages. This is a fast method of iteration most of the time. So in summary, what we're saying is this is going to be our method. We're going to start at x0. We're going to go up to the curve. We're going to follow the tangent to the x-axis, and this is going to be our x1. Up to the curve, tangent to the x-axis, x2. Uh, Up to the curve, tangent to the x-axis, x3. Right, so how do we do this? Well, actually, we're going to construct an iterative formula. And the first thing that you'd really like me to say is this iterative formula is in the formula book. So that's great. Um, there are many videos online um, for proving the iterative formula, exactly where it comes from. I'm not going to do it now. The iterative formula is this. Xn plus 1 is equal to Xn minus f of Xn divided by f dash of xn. Looks a bit like some stuff going on in here. If it, it reminds you a little bit of uh, some of your equations of straight lines that you might have found, like uh, y minus y1 equals that kind of thing. It is because it all kind of comes from that kind of working. It really does come from just using the gradient of a straight line, y exempts plus c, putting them all together. Okay, This is where that comes from. And it turns out it's a really powerful method of how to find a root. The other nice thing about it, as opposed to the fixed point iteration, is that it's always this iterative formula, whereas in the uh, fixed point iteration, it depends on your rearrangement as to what the iteration is. So let's do an example. So this is from the formula book. This is what it says in the formula book, exactly as I said. So you don't have to remember that. It's not that hard to remember. I guess the biggest mistake that people make is they put the um, the derivative on the top rather than the bottom. Uh, it's important to note that the derivative is the one on the bottom. So if I'm doing a question like this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and I'm going to differentiate it. 
I think quite often it's relatively rare that a very, very difficult integral is combined with a newton raphson It's definitely possible, um, but, you know, this is a, a relatively simple derivative that we've got to do here. Well, very simple. Still might mess it up. I think I got it. Okay, now we're going to write the iterative formula. Make sure you put the xn plus 1s and the xn's in there. You must show your iterative formula clearly and you must put the n plus 1s and the n's in there. It is not good enough to just write x. So this is the iterative formula. xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus the function but with xn's everywhere. I'm going to take my time. Divided by the derivative, but with xn's everywhere. And it looks something like that. And now, although it's much, it's kind of a bit more messier than uh, the ones we've seen before, we're going to do exactly the same as we would have done in the previous examples. We're just going to put in, we're going to choose an x0, or in the question it might say that my x0 is 2.8, and then I'm going to find the iterative formula and make it work. Uh, and find x1, put it into the iterative formula, and make it work. So I'm going to do it on my calculator. Um, let's show let's show one just to um, kind of see it. Let's write it out. It's a bit messy, so I don't want to spend too long doing it. Um, but x one is going to be two point eight minus two in brackets two point eight cubed plus six in brackets two point eight squared minus two point eight minus three. It's a bit tedious over 6, 2.8 squared plus 12, 2.8 minus 1. And if I put that all into my calculator, I get 1.7309. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take time on this one because I think it's so easy to accidentally type these things wrong into your calculator. Uh, 2.8 is my answer. So I've set that as my answer. Now the iterative formula, answer minus, that's my xn. So my xn is going to be answer to answer cubed. Click right to make sure I don't end up in there. Six answer squared minus answer minus three. This is where if I make a mistake, I'll get someone in the room to call out. Six answer squared plus 12 answer minus 1 equals and I got the number that I, I got before great okay so now I should be able to just click answer again to get my next value uh, 1.105 so x2 is equal to 1.1052 x3 0 0.8029, 0 0.8029, and I could keep writing them down. Whatever the exam question says, it goes up to a certain point or, 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 or something like that. Follow the instructions, keep pressing the numbers, and I get that. And I would say this is tending to something like this. I'm going to zoom down. And it tends to 0 0.707, uh, oh, 707107. Uh, Should we say it? 70107. Now, what I've done is I have actually used this equation that I had before here, and I did start at 2.8 on this picture, so we have exactly done this. Uh, that function multiplied out is the function that I had there. Um, so 
it should have found the square root of 2. Because if I go back up to this equation, this equation is actually equal to 2, uh, it should have found 1 over the square root of 2, uh, x minus a half, uh, x, x squared minus a half, I think I've got x squared minus a half, uh, x, I forget, plus 3. So it should be that since the root of that equation is that, this should be roughly equal to 1 over root 2. So let's have a look what that, that, that is. 1 over root 2 is that. 1 over the square root of 2 is equal to that. And there we go. It has found it. So we have used newton raphson it, well, it was fairly fast in finding that. It kind of bounced up and down, and it, and it zoomed in on there. OK, so um, actually, exam questions are likely to look very, very similar to that. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to do this exam question, but I'm going to show you um, this exam question. And the final point that I'm going to do is talk about uh, part C here. Um, so you can construct the newton raphson formula, write down the formula very clearly, make sure you find the derivative, put it into the formula very clearly, make sure you keep the x, n plus 1 to xn. It says using the formula with x equals 1, find the values of x2 and x3. Show very clearly your values of x2 and x3. And this says, explain why for this question, the newton raphson method cannot be used for x1 is 0. Well, I'm going to show you what the danger is. The danger is this. So it's not necessarily using the same one, but it, it has come up with this. There is, There are actually, on the picture, two possible values that would be a problem if I tried to use these. I think this is my favorite x cubed minus 3x plus 1 graph. And if that was f of x, f dash of x is equal to 2x squared minus uh, 3x squared, 3x squared minus 3, and if f of f dash of 1 is equal to 0. And we can see that on the graph because the graph has a gradient of 0 here. Now if you remember what our method is, like for example over here, you go up to the curve and follow the tangent back down to the x-axis. But the problem if we were to choose 1, and in fact also minus 1 in this case, because also if I put minus 1 in there I'd get 0, is that the graph, the tangent, would be horizontal. It would be parallel to the x-axis. So remember the iteration, the next iterative point is the point at which this tangent crosses the x-axis, and there's not, there's not going to be one. So you cannot use starting points which are turning points of the graph. That is the danger. So cannot use stationary points, points of inflections also can't be used, stationary points as initial value. Um, you would see that if you try to put it into your iterative formula, which I remind you is xn plus 1, is equal to xn minus f of x over x, f, 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 xn, uh, f dash of xn, we would get the problem where f of dash of xn would be 0 and we would have a, a division by 0 issue. So we can actually see it in the formula that it doesn't work. Um, we can see it in the iterative formula. You can see it on the picture that it doesn't work. That's the problem with newton raphson That's why it can't be used. So if we were doing this exam question, uh, you, if you were well revised, you'd go, ah, I know that newton raphson doesn't work when the gradient is 0 because it's going to miss. I'd draw a little picture just to make sure I've explained it clearly. Um, I would also, at some point in this question, I would have calculated f of dash of x. So I would substitute in x equals 0, get 0, say that it doesn't work in this equation, draw a little picture, say the tangent's not going to cross. Um, I know it's just one mark, but it says explain, so they are expecting kind of full sentences and proper answers in this case. Okay, so obviously practice a lot of kind of exam questions that you can find on this. Um, I've got a couple of recommended questions uh, on in, from exercise 10c. Uh, I recommend questions 2, 3, 6, and 7. There is one last section uh, in the textbook uh, on modelling in exercise 10D. Uh, I'm not going to specifically do a video on this. Um, it uses the methods that we've just used up to this point. 
Um, however, it's worded questions, which are the kind of thing where you have to just spend time practicing them, make sure you're really kind of asking any questions and getting help when you need them. Um, but you will just have to use the other, uh, you'll just have to identify which method you're using in each case. Um, I think that they're, they're all quite long questions in exercise 10D, so kind of a few of these is what I recommend um, until you're comfortable with it. And that is that chapter uh, covered completely. Uh, well, most of the points as far much as I can get into these videos. So good luck.